So I've started work on the 68 twin. As you can see, I removed the bias board. I'm going to clean that up and repopulate it. You can see the color of the chassis there versus the dirt everywhere else. I'm going to clean the chassis to make it all kind of match. It's got kind of a waxy feel to that, just particles in the air over time. I removed the three wires that were going to this ground lug, the HT center tap, the shield for the power transformer, and the ground wire going to the uh, reservoir cap ground. This is a very crucial ground, and it is held in place by this nut, which also holds the transformer in place. The trouble is, this nut had vibrated loose. It happens all the time in these old fenders. And once that gets loose, dirt gets in there. You can see how nasty that is. And this solder joint can actually break from being flexed, or at least the ground can break, this ground tab can break out of the solder joint. It hasn't happened in this one, but uh, it can. And when I'm done with this, it will not be possible for that to happen. I'm gonna redo this the way it was done in the pre-65 amps. Much better now. Everything's cleaner. The hardware that holds a transformer in place is only holding the tr transformer in place. The old solder is removed. I will reconnect all the wires directly to the chassis at this spot later in the process. But we have a good building block. We cannot have bad grounds and expect good performance and good sound. We just can't. I've gotten all the electrolytic caps off this and the non-original caps. And I have cleaned and cleaned and cleaned this board. And I removed the backing board and cleaned it off. And I'm about to slide it back in place. And I have soaked the board in isopropyl, and then I heated up the eyelets with the iron that drive the isopropyl out. Should have no leaking DC in this when I repopulate it. Everything that you see on the board now is original to the amp, and I have not measured all the caps yet, but I have measured all the resistors, and they are all uh, within tolerance, very close to the actual stated values on the schematic. Unless one's noisy, they can all stay. So I'll slide this board back in place. After I repopulate the board, I will then screw it all the way down. But having this little bit of flex in it here and there right now means I can kind of hook the new component leads under the eyelet, not just tuck them into the hole. Time to get the rest of the faceplate cleaned. You can see how much dust is here where the knob used to be. It's really filthy. And there's more under there. All right, everything's all cleaned up. The nuts are all cleaned up. Uh, everything's tightened. The switches have been cleaned. Even these little screws polished up quite nicely. So it's a much prettier looking front panel. And once it gets the new shiny knobs, it'll be a little bit more jewel-like, which is a nice thing. Let's turn our attention to the tubes next. So we've got four Sovtech tubes here. These two are the same batch. This is a different uh, batch. Um, this one says 54, this one says 48. I don't have high hopes for this being a very well-matched set, but uh, we'll worry about that later. Of more concern, is that they're very wiggly in the tube sockets. Now, sometimes the Fender tube sockets starting in 68, especially through the 70s, got kind of crappy. Let's see if I can tighten them up or whether we need to replace these tube sockets because I should not be able to move these much at all. Uh, on that note, these tube clamps aren't great choices in a, in a combo, these spring retainers. They just vibrate and buzz. So this will be getting some bear traps like the previous models of the Twin Reverb had. Let's take these out and I'll take a look at the uh, tube sockets and see if we can tighten them up. All right, I was able to tighten up the clamps inside the tube socket itself. You know, they have a little U-shaped clamp kind of thing and I just press each side back towards the middle. And the metal has an, is still strong enough that once I reminded it of where it used to be, it wanted to stay there. And I went ahead and put in one of the Belton bear traps I'll do the others after this. But uh, in comparison to the loose socket with this flimsy spring retainer, which wobbles quite a bit, I'm using the same amount of force. I don't know how to demonstrate that all the way on camera, but I mean, if I move my finger the same amount, the tube just doesn't move. This is what you want, especially in a combo. 
Next, I'll be cleaning out these tube sockets. It's nothing too major. These aren't that dirty compared to other old 60s amps that come in, but I'm going to flush them out a couple times with isopropyl alcohol, which usually gets everything out and leaves no residue behind. So, you know, do no harm. While waiting for all the sockets to dry, I went in here and cleaned up the rear panel, the rear part of the chassis in general, but the, the panel. So some naphtha followed by some WD-40, and it's really looking good. Someone in the comments the other day said that WD-40 smelled bad to them. And I've always thought it was kind of an aphrodisiac, but you know, tastes do vary. Well, all the metal oxide resistors are out and replaced with half watt carbon composites as original. And the uh, 470 ohm here in the cathode, sorry, in the uh, phase inverter, it is technically the cathode of the phase inverter and that's the tail resistor. The cathode resistor has been changed out for one as well. And they had retained the 268K uh, bias leak, grid leaks going to the output tubes, even though they changed it in other ways to the AB763 bias circuit. So I've changed those back to 220Ks. In for a penny, in for a pound, you know. Um, and other things I've done here, these caps, aside from the ones in the tone stack, I have neatened up the leads so that they're not, not a lot of excess. There's not any slack, but there's no real tension on them. And I have... Uh, Flip them around as necessary to keep the outer foil end to the side with the lowest impedance. The one place I have not done that is the uh, tone stack for two reasons. Number one, the 47 nanofarads, because of the way that they were trimmed from the factory. If I flip them around, they're going to look kind of weird. They're going to be really close over here. Second of all, in a tone stack, going from plate to the pots, it's arguable which side is really that much closer to low impedance, whether it's B plus or ground. An argument could be made either way. The amp will sound fine the way these are. I will neaten these up when I go back in here for the next go round, which will involve installing the cathode bypass caps and uh, installing the ceramic disc caps that are missing right now, especially here in the LFO. Basically just the LFO here at the phase inverter input and this 22 nanofarad or 20 nanofarad technically uh, here off V2B. V2B or not V2B, that is the question. To find out the answer, tune in next time. Until then, thanks for watching.